Hi, this is Jessica from Nervous System Reset. So one of the basic components of the Nervous System Reset program is education. So I believe that it's really important if we're going to have a healthy relationship with our bodies, if we're going to be able to work effectively with our nervous system responses, we have to really understand how our nervous system works and how it functions. So this is a video. Um, you can consider it Nervous System 101. Basically, it's a simplified um, version of explaining the, the operation of the nervous system to you. And what I'd like to do is to preface this by saying, we're taking, or I'm taking, a really complex, sophisticated subject matter, the nervous system, and I'm condensing it down into a working model that I've evolved for the work that I do with people that I think basically represents the basic architectural elements that are important for us to know about in terms of our nervous system functioning so we can have a better sense of tracking what's going on when we go into stress activation cycles. So again, the, the preface here is, we're taking something really complex and we're simplifying it so that it's very accessible for anyone to really get to know their nervous system in this way. All right. So what I'd like to do is um, bear with me while I turn on screen share here because I'm going to pull up some slides to share with you so that I can better explain this. Now, the part of the nervous system that we're most interested in talking about today is a part of our nervous system called the autonomic nervous system or the ANS. And the autonomic nervous system is what drives all of the, controls all of the basic body functions that are going on that we don't have to think about consciously. So our breathing, our heart beating, um, our digestion working, all of those kinds of body systems that are going on every second of the day. And the autonomic nervous system also controls or regulates our stress response, right? So when we go into a, a stress response, it's the ANS that is sort of um, dictating the physiology behind that, okay? Now, the easiest way that I know to talk about the nervous system, this aspect of the nervous system, is to think of it as an engine, the engine that's driving everything. We've already talked in a different video about how the nervous system is kind of the core of all aspects of self, body, mind, heart, spirit. And if we think about engines like a car, engines have different gears or circuits of response that they can move back and forth between. And our nervous system is very much the same as that. So we have, just like in a car, we have a gas pedal. And this is the part, this is the branch of the ANS called the sympathetic branch. It's responsible for mobilizing energy in response to life events. It's also the part of our nervous system that kicks into gear when we go into a stress response, what is commonly referred to as a fight flight response. So that's our gas pedal. It makes the engine drive harder and mobilize. And then just like in a car, we have a brake pedal. This is controlled by the other branch of the autonomic nervous system, the parasympathetic branch. And you think about what a brake pedal does in a car, it's pretty important because if the car is going a certain speed and the road conditions change and we have to slow down, we put our foot on the brake and that slows everything down. And we can also take our foot off the brake and allow the car to speed back up. And in our nervous system, our parasympathetic brake pedal does exactly that. It basically helps us manage how much of a response we go into based on the stimuli we're encountering. And it also helps us regulate how much of a stress response we move into. Okay, so really important thing to have. And just like in a car, we have a second braking mechanism in our nervous system. It's also part of the parasympathetic branch. And this is um, more what we would use in kind of a last ditch attempt to control or regulate a response. So think about a handbrake in the car. The only time we're gonna use it, aside from parking, is if the car's going too fast and for some reason our brake pedal is no longer functioning. Well, if that's the case, the only other option we have is to kind of pull the handbrake.
And this is what sends us into what we call a freeze response. We're gonna talk about that in just a moment, okay? So basically gas pedal and two different brakes, a brake pedal and an emergency brake. So the model that I use is to talk about nervous system activation levels as um, using kind of this idea of a temperature gauge or a thermometer. And so essentially what we're looking at getting more familiar with tracking is what is the temperature in our nervous system in terms of its activation. So if you look on this bottom blue zone, this would be the zone where we would be experiencing a felt sense of safety. So what I mean by that is at a cellular level in our body, are we safe or not? It doesn't have anything to do with kind of our cognition or our assessment of safety from a personality level. It's really more about how is the physiology feeling? Is it tracking a sense of safety or not? When we're in this zone, we have a brake pedal that works really, really well, and it can control how much activation or mobilization happens in our nervous system. So we really like this brake pedal because this allows us to kind of control and regulate the speed or the rate at which our system is gearing up towards um, uh, action, okay? Now, as the temperature in the nervous system starts to rise and hits this kind of orange zone in here, what's happening at the level of the physiology is we're moving from an experience of safety to an experience of not safe. Or another way of saying that is we're picking up some sense of danger signal. Okay. Now, what happens there is the foot comes off of the brake pedal and the foot starts pressing down more and more on the gas pedal. And essentially, what our body is trying to do is it's looking for a way to create, to come back to safety by finding some kind of successful option to resolve the danger through running away or fighting it off. And that's what we call a fight flight response. Now, those signals of danger could be very, very minimal, in which case we would be kind of in this lower register of the orange zone, or they could be really, really major. And essentially what's happening is in the lower threshold of danger signals, we might be experiencing that as just like some general worry or concern. We might feel a little frustrated or irritable about things. But as the signals of danger start to increase and our physiology feels more and more unsafe, the, the experience that we're going to be having is going to rise and we're going to start to, you know, general concern is going to start to become more like anxiety or fear or panic and frustration or some gen, general or mild irritability is going to look a little bit more like anger and then eventually at the upper level of, or upper threshold of activation, more like rage. Okay, so the temperature is rising here. The gas pedal is depressing more and more and more. And essentially what happens when we hit this dotted line right here, that's the line where it's our tipping point. It's the point at which our body feels like it has a successful, viable option for resolving the danger through fight or flight to going to a place where it doesn't feel like it has any option for that. And this would be the zone of overwhelm where our system feels like it has no other options. And that's when we pull our emergency brake and our body moves into what we call a freeze response. Essentially the systems shut down and lock up, okay? But it would be kind of like the equivalent of having the gas pedal in your car fully pressed down while the brake pedal slams down at the same time, okay? So buried inside of this under-functioning or stuck or frozen system, is all of the intense signals around activation and threat that we might experience at this upper level of the danger zone. Now, what's really important for us to know is that all three of these zones are zones we're gonna encounter throughout our life over and over and over again. In fact, we might encounter them throughout the day. And it's not like we're supposed to live in one zone. A healthy nervous system, what we would call a well-regulated nervous system, is a nervous system that can freely move back and forth between these three zones of response um, according to what that nervous system is encountering, okay? So 
a healthy, well-regulated nervous system is actually going to have flow in it. And again, we might come all the way up here into an overwhelm response because sometimes that is the best adaptive response that we um, have to move into in order to assure our survival. So there's nothing wrong with that. But what we want to be able to see is a system that can recover and can find its way back down towards this blue zone, which is where um, we get to recover and our systems come back online and things are flowing. Okay. Now, the really unfortunate thing is that this kind of nice up and down flow of our nervous system sort of depends on the kinds of stress that we encounter being short or time limited and having a successful and viable fight flight um, resolution. But as you probably know and can speak to very, very well, most of the stress that we all encounter in our modern world doesn't have a short time limited duration. And most of those stressors are not things that can be resolved by running away from or kind of confronting or fighting them off. So what ends up happening is we have all of these kind of constant stress signals that are being um, uh, absorbed by our physiology, literally by our body. And they're sort of building up, you know, kind of layer by layer by layer by layer. And what that does is it starts to send our baseline of activation in our system up this temperature gauge. So we end up with the, the arousal signals in our nervous system really living more in these upper registers of activation rather than flowing freely up and down this full scale. And that's when life can start getting really, really uncomfortable. Now, keep in mind, this isn't just about having experienced trauma. Certainly an experience of trauma at any point in our lives, which would be the equivalent to just feeling an experience of overwhelm, can send us into a state where our, our it's almost like our regulation, um, the nervous system regulation gets stuck and we don't know how to come out of that state of overwhelm back to the safety or recovery zone. But chronic ongoing stress can do the same thing if it's repeated and um, it's prolonged, it's happening over a period of time. So this is really something that impacts most of us, whether we're conscious of it or not. So one of the things that I'm really interested in doing is I'm I want to help people start to be able to read their body signals, to recognize the signs of activation that is moving up this temperature gauge and um, recovery, which is moving down the temperature gauge. I want to help people learn how to track how their system's moving back and forth between these zones throughout the day. And to also start to recognize where their baseline is set at. So for instance, if you're somebody that tends to worry a lot or you get frustrated really easily, that is just information from the nervous system telling us that your baseline might be normalized slightly higher up this temperature gauge. And if you're somebody that has a lot of anxiety or you tend to get angry easily, that's sort of your, your knee-jerk response when you're challenged by something. Again, it's the nervous system simply communicating to us that your baseline might be normalized even higher up this temperature gauge. And you can see the kind of the higher up your baseline goes, the less window of tolerance or the best bet or the less bandwidth you have between your normal and that tipping point. So the higher up our baseline is set, the less resilient we basically are, right? And it is totally possible to live with your baseline set right around this tipping point or even above this tipping point. I see lots of people, I work with lots of people who have that experience. Um, and if you've never known anything other, it's hard to recognize that that might not be optimal. So recognizing where your baseline is, and then learning a variety of very simple, easy to apply somatic and awareness practices that basically take this arousal and begin to discharge it a little bit at a time, kind of over and over and over again. And essentially what we 
can arrive at when we start applying these practices that are down regulating is that over time our nervous system arousal levels can actually start to lower back down and as they lower back down we're going to move organically back into this zone of uh, a physiology of safety okay and that's the primary goal of this program. That's really what I'm passionate about. It's what the nervous system reset process is all about, is really helping people learn how to listen to their bodies, to track their body signals, and to work effectively and strategically with what their body's telling them so that you can come into a new relationship or alliance or partnership with your body. Lots of clients that I work with say to me, I don't know what safety feels like. I've never felt safe. And I say, great, we can work with that. Because the truth is, we can all find a place of safety in some corner of our body. And once that's on our map of consciousness, we have something we can work towards. So my interest is in helping you get to know your nervous system better so that you can begin to work in better partnership with your body instead of feeling like your body is, you know, running the show and you're um, being dragged around by the hair by it. Most of us don't feel comfortable in our bodies. We don't feel like the body is a safe place to be, but there is a way to learn that our body is not a threatening place to be. In fact, it can be a very empowering, engaged place to be. And so that's what this process is all about. If this is information that interests or intrigues you and you're curious to know more information about the programs that I offer, please check out my offerings at www.nervoussystemreset.com. I work with clients via video conference so that work can be accomplished wherever you are, as long as you have a good internet signal and you have some kind of a device, a laptop, a tablet, a phone, even. So check it out. And I hope this information has been helpful. Thanks for tuning in.